Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. We have Oscar De La Hoya. The legend. The legend. Thank you, man. Now, we were uh, talking about the documentary. The Golden Boy, man. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Why do you think now was the time? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think, I think you know, ever since I was, I was six years old when I started boxing, um, I realized that I was conditioned to, to, become, to become a fighter, to become, you know, uh, to take uh, basically my, my, my family, my uncles, my father, they had, a, they had this vision. Like, you know, if, I, if, if we have this kid mm -hmm. who is good in boxing and maybe one day he can take, it, take us out of the hood, you mm -hmm. know? Which wasn't you. It was, it was supposed to be your brother. It was brother. my brother. Right. So then when, when my brother said, you know what, I, I, I don't, I don't I, I fucking hate boxing. So that was a chosen one. So then, you know, instantly I felt the pressure, you know, of everybody, all the family and everything. So um, so as the years went on, I became the golden boy when I was 19 years old, won the gold medal. Um, you know, and it's all the pressure from everybody. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're just conditioned to be the golden boy, to have all that pressure from family and this and that. So basically like a robot man mm -hmm. and so now that i'm i just turned 50 years old and so it's like i want to do it my way i i want to i want to tell my story my way honest truthful raw real and and that's what we did man. i was going to ask why you know because it's it's so truthful i mean from yeah. the I, i'm not going to say that actually after watching the doc i have to ask myself should i believe anything that comes out your mouth Right. In this interview. And the reason he said that was because he lied he's, so much. he's truthful. Well, I'm not no, going to say that. He is so truthful on the doc talking about, you know, his mom and what people thought from his mom. Sure. And, uh, you know, but he lied about his mom. We'll get to that, though. But go ahead. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, why so truthful? Like, why say this is the time to be so truthful? Because some of the things that you said, nobody would ever know if yeah, it, it was a lie. Yeah, no, of course. Just, I mean, living living with the lies uh, for so many years, it eats you inside, man. You, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't go to sleep. You can't wake up in the morning, you know, just being honest with yourself. You know, it's. I lived it for so many years, man, and 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 again, I was conditioned. I was, I believed my own lies, all those years. Mm. You know, that was my life. Mm. Yeah, but was do you crazy. feel like if you didn't lie, you wouldn't be the person you are now? Because everything was a story, right? It was, yeah. it, it was a perfect yeah. storm. Sure. The, the the Olympics and the fact that you know people thought that you know you're doing it for your mom because that was her last wish, right. and like people were sold on that story. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were sold, and uh, I think everything was meant to be. You know, because I don't think I don't think I would have had, had the drive to become world champion, to win the gold medal. Um, you know, uh, I mean, when when I was a kid at 18 years old, I win the gold, and 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 the f reporter right after the fight, the first thing he tells me is, "Oh, you won this for your mom." I'm like, "Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I won it for my mom." So mm -hmm. then the story just caught Took fire, off. and I'm not gonna say anything, you know. Um, I'm just gonna do my job in the ring and train and fight, and uh, and I became the golden boy. And then the lie just kept going, just kept going. So, so the lie about the lie about your mother's last words being she wanted you to win the gold medal that came from the reporter. That that came, yeah, that came from the reporters. That mm -hmm. came from, and I thought it was at the time. I thought it was great. I mean, I, I really didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. I, I was just a kid, man. Just, just agreeing with the reporter. You know? Now you know what's interesting about that. Back in that those times, whether it was, whether you were a part of a boy band or you were some type of celebrity, they did craft these stories. Oh yeah, around you, mm -hmm. just for yeah. just for promotion. No, they did, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and being a shy kid from East LA, whatever. I mean, I could have been from anywhere, but um, I didn't really have a word. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have anything to say. You know, it's like I just I just went along with whatever anybody told me. You know. I, I was just doing my job, and that's fighting. You, know? you feel you feel like you know when sometimes we talk about the greats, they talk about the greats' parents, right, and the role that they played, and yeah. the fact that sometimes it was abusive, but that sure. quote unquote abusiveness yeah. made them who they are today. When you oh, look yeah. at Michael Jackson, you oh, look yeah. at uh, some would say Britney Spears, and even yourself yeah. reading the story, how your dad was on top of you so much, sure. even when necessarily you didn't want to do it. And he yeah. talks about the beatings that your father got and the things that you had to do. As a parent, are you the same way, or, or even yeah. do you dislike your father because of how he trained yeah. you and the person that he made you? Yeah, well, what's crazy is that my mother was physically abusive to me, and my father was emotionally abusive to me. So it's like he, like my father, just the other year, like two years ago, I, I, I actually had the courage to go up to him and tell him that I love him, 
because he couldn't do it to me. He couldn't mm. like, tell me, you know, I love you. So you've you, never so. told your father you love him, no, but for no, two years ago, no, wow. Yeah, just two years ago. So I, I and, and that that took a lot of courage for me, man. I, I was like, I didn't know how to do it. So one day I just, I think I, I drank a little tequila shot or something and shit. And, and I went up to him and I said, dad, I love you. And I was like scared, you know, like for, for his reaction. I thought he was going to do something to me, you know, because that's what your head tells mm -hmm. you. And so he just started crying, man. And he hugged me and he says, I love you too. Wow. You know, yeah. At a young age, you you were taught not to cry. Is, is, there, right. a, is right. there a time you remember when you realized that was considered like uh, mental health trauma? Um, you know, I, I stopped crying. I stopped crying uh, when I was like 13, um, when my mother would beat me up and uh, I was just numb at that point. But see, to your to your point, I mean, that's what built my character. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it made me tough. So I would go in the ring as an amateur and as a pro, um, I would go in the ring and literally picture my mom's face, mm. you know, and just, I would just get out of control and just start beating people up, you know? Mm. So that, I guess she was my drive at the same time. And then my father, you know, he was just like a tough guy, you know, he was just a tough guy pushing me every day, you know, uh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you know? I mean, there were times where my father never laid a hand on me, but there were times where it's like, I mean, he, he was close, you know, cause I, because I didn't want to go to the gym because mm -hmm. I was tired maybe at 14, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. I don't remember you, you didn't show your mother, you didn't talk about your mother being physically abusive to you in the doc. Never. Yeah, I did. You, I don't, yeah. I, don't. I said, I said, um, yeah, I, I mentioned it a couple of times and uh, where, where I just, I, I hated, I just hated the fact that she would beat me up. I guess um, I just heard it as beatings. Like you know, we all yeah, hate beatings as a kid. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got beatings. I got, mm -hmm. I got real beatings. Mm -hmm. um, were they beat? Were, you, were they beating you up or like beatings? Because you know, well, beating the belt, the yeah, yeah, hangers, yeah, yeah. and you know all that. Whips Which was and that's all that. abuse. Yeah, that yeah. was abuse. We don't. Yeah. We didn't look at it as that back then. We didn't. It seemed, no, it seemed we didn't. normal back. It was normal then. Back, was normal back then. Yeah, yeah, it was normal back then. Now. And 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 I asked myself a lot of times, like, man, I, would I do that to? I, I wouldn't do that to my kids now. Mm -hmm. That's what I was asking. You know, my youngest one is nine years old, um, and my oldest one is 20, uh, 25. I I would never lay a hand on them. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, uh, and I would never like yell at them or, you know, there, there's ways of doing things, you know? And so it's like, I, I think to myself, okay, shit, maybe I was abused, mm -hmm. you know? Now, the, now the way you were with, with women, right? People yeah. will call you a womanizer. You was a whore, Oscar. People will call you a whore. I kind of was, whore. man, yeah. Do you, a you, man whore, right? Yes, there was yeah. a part of the doc where you said, you told one girl, <laughs> I don't even remember sleeping with you because I slept with 500 women since you. Right. 500? Yeah. Well, the lawyer said that. I, oh, I, I, oh yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. The lawyer said, it might have been like 200, man. Got you. I was gonna ask what 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 got you to the point? Was it a woman that hurt you? Was it maybe something in a relationship with your mom that you missed? I think or was it, it I think it was now looking back at it, I think it was the relationship with my mom. Really? Yeah. Because uh the abusive relationship and it's like I, I hate it. I, I love her, right? Because she's my mom, mm -hmm. but I hate the living crap out of her because of what she did to me, you know, and, and how she treated me and, mm -hmm. and the love she never gave to me. And maybe it has something to do with that, you know, the, so the, the, the disrespect revenge. of women, you know, right. because of my mom. So, damn, now that I think about it, you know, when you talk about, you said you went in the ring and you used to see your mom's face. So it was just all that pain and hang, yeah. anger yeah. that you carried with you. So when you finally did tell the truth, like how you're telling the truth now, did it feel like a relief? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the relief came, the relief came a, a few years ago when I went to the cemetery Um and I just, I just unleashed on her, man. My first words, I don't know if I can cuss here, but yeah, my first words um, to her were, I fucking hate you. Mm. And I had this big old letter that I was gonna, you know, read to her. And, um, and, and it just, I was gonna apologize to her, you know? Cause I felt, I felt that she was the victim and that I was the one, you know, the kid doing wrong. But in, instinctively, I just said, you know what, I fucking hate you. And I just started crying and just, and at the end I was like, you know what, I love you. And boom, I was like, I felt released. Mm -hmm. I felt like if I, you know, got my feelings out and I'm okay, I'm okay now, you know. Yeah, I mean, you never got the opportunity to talk to her face to face. Mm -hmm. and never did. Tell her how yeah, you feel. Never did. She never, she never hugged me, gave me a, you know, I love you or anything like that. So it's, Damn. It, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Now you you when you were uh, starting your professional career as a boxer, most people would reach out for huge promote, not even huge promoters, huge managers, right? You got the manager from a, a GM dealership, right? Which worked out right, but nobody would have went yeah. that way. They would have they would have sure. tried to. So what was why why did you go that route? Was that the only person you know, or was it something that you said I just like this guy? No, I mean my father 
put him there. I mean, put him in that position. You know, it's they were. But like he sold friends. cars. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I was I was smart enough to fire him mm -hmm. a couple of years later, but um, that's that was my life. You know, it's like everybody told me what to do, and I had no problem with it. I I asked no questions. You know, I just I just wanted to train and fight. That's it. You know? do, you, do you think your father pushed you so hard because he was living? Oh yeah, his dreams through you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. he was. Oh yeah, I mean, my father. Yeah, my father was a professional fighter. I think he had like eight fights, lost seven, you Jesus. know. And so that's why. So my brother was actually the chosen one to be like the golden boy, right? But he he just didn't like it. He quit, and uh, and that's when that's when my family said, you know what? Okay, you're gonna be the chosen one at six years old. Yeah. I wonder how you were able to have so much. It seems like discipline to prepare for fights. Yeah. But you didn't have all that discipline outside the ring. Right. Right. You know how you know what happened was, yeah, my discipline ended outside the ring, I think when I was like like twenty two, you know, because I was very disciplined in and outside of the ring. When I would fight, because I at at one point my first year I fought like thirteen times. Mm -hmm. So I was in the gym every single day. And then, uh, and then when I started getting fame and money and this and that, so it's I, I got out of control. Mm -hmm. Like the bug just came in me and just like just took over, you mm -hmm. know. And I was like, I was this little famous guy in L.A., you know, and and women were everywhere, and uh, and I just got out of control. I didn't know how to handle it. Nobody gave me like a handbook, you know, like right. this is how you have to treat your life, treat yourself, you know, and or treat fame. And I just did what I what I can do, you know, what I knew. And uh, I took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people took advantage of me. And, uh, you know, and that was my life, man. When did you realize you were famous outside of East LA? Right when I won the gold mm -hmm. in 92. Yeah, I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I was I saying mean, that. It was, it was a global, it was like, I mean, it was the Olympics back then. I think that might have been the last Olympics where it was like televised worldwide and everybody knew, like, my story... Uh, you know, dedicating the gold to my mom was like everywhere. You we know? were just talking about that. When you got off that plane, I, I told Charlamagne yeah. earlier, I was like, I don't think I, I've seen a reaction like that from an Olympic right. star yeah. since that time where people were waiting at the airport for yeah. it. Yeah, and back then, you didn't have to go through security. You can go straight to the gate. And I remember them opening the door and, and, and I, I'm this kid with my gold medal around my neck. And I tell the steward, it's like, shit, who, who are all these people here for? And they're like, man, they're here for you. And right there, my life just changed. Wow. Yeah, instantly. The, 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 the quote-unquote picture, the fishnet picture, the, the, the picture, did you think your career was over at that picture? No, no. I didn't, I didn't think it was over because... Uh, what was your thought when you seen that picture when it was released? Um, yeah, I was, you know, obviously embarrassed and, and, and um, you know, I was, I was in, in pain because, um, you know, it's, it happened so fast and then I, but, but I knew in back of my head, okay, I have enough power and money to make it disappear. I have people who are going to cover it up, this and that. We, we even, you we paid hired. a million dollars. I, I think it was more, mm. you know. But it still came out. Yeah, it's, it, and it still came out. And, and, um, and I remember, I remember, um, I remember saying like, shit, okay, I mean, my life is over. Like the golden boy is tarnished, that's mm -hmm. it, it's over. But then this machine came out, swept it all up, you know, and, and we even got a forensic, I don't know what they call him, but um, where where he came out and said, some expert and with photos and Photoshopping and this and that. And he even said, you know what, these are not, these are not real. Oscar, stop it, come on, man. Yeah, uh, we even, we even did that. Stop. Yeah, we even did that. supposed to be you telling the truth. You know damn well those pics in the fishnet. No, no, they're real, they're real. Oh, okay, Oh, okay. no, no, they're real. Yeah, the way yeah. you did it in the doc, it was like, oh, yeah. he was like, I guess I'm clear. You, 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 oh, in the doc, yeah. you made it seem like it was photoshopped and you was like, I guess I'm clear. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay, but they were real. Oh, they're real, okay. yeah, oh, right. hell yeah. Okay. What did your friends say? Because I can't imagine, my friends would, Joke me to this day over that picture. Like yeah, Charlemagne, we got the same kind of pictures. I'm yeah, the worst. Don't yeah. listen to him. Well, yeah. look. I mean, look. I mean, I'm I sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yet. I'm sure we all have you know done something mm -hmm. here and there. You know, behind closed doors. You know, so it's like now today. It's like yeah. I, I wish I would have known about it because I was like I was probably sedated when that happened because I don't remember shit. The young lady you was dealing with, she said y'all was. She she said y'all were drinking and y'all were on on substances. She wouldn't say yeah. what it was. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, yeah. could have been. But I don't remember. Like honestly, I don't remember. They are real. It was me, but fuck, I don't remember. 
Why'd yeah. you cut her off though? She seemed like a nice woman. Like she, like why'd you cut her off for that? Why'd you stop talking to her? Um, you know what I would do? What I would do back then, um, when I would meet women or. It was it was mainly like I would go to a strip club or you know a, you know and and I would meet these girls and stuff and and it would never be about sex. It would never be a, no no hold on hold on. I mean when when I would when I hold on hold on when they when when I would my intention was obviously. Mm -hmm. But then I would start to like have conversations, you know, like just to feel close to somebody, you know. And she says it in the doc, that mm -hmm. girl, she says it in the doc. She says, you know, yeah, we would never have sex, but he would always cried to me and he would always like with his mom and this and that and i was like oh shit i mean i don't remember most of it but mm -hmm. it's like yeah it makes sense you know because it's like i i have this relationship with my mom that's like a love hate you know mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty crazy yeah in the doc you said for the first time during training camp with pacquiao you was getting drunk yeah so i wonder what role did sex and alcohol play in your losses to trinidad and, and, and shane Mosley? Um, no, I thought I was, I was, I was focused in those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, fo I, I was, I was, yeah, I was focused a thousand percent in those. Mm -hmm. But with the Pacquiao fight, I was getting beat up, uh, in training camp, which never happened before, um, by sparring partners. And so the last two weeks of training camp, I started just drinking. Mm. Yeah, I started, I was in good shape, but I was, I started drinking a lot. And uh, and so when I went when I went inside the ring against Pac, I was already a dead man walking. I I had no chance whatsoever. Why do you think you was losing versus your, your sparring partners? Was it age? Was yeah, it? Yeah, was age too. Cause I, I had gone up to one sixty to middleweight, and then I tried coming back down to one forty seven, and I was already older, so my body couldn't take it. And um and and then plus Pacquiao at the time he was coming up, and and he was the beast man. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I'll fight him, you know. And but it was it was the wrong move for me, man. When you when you fought Pacquiao, did you do it for money or did you really just want to do it for the sport? Because I, I I couldn't tell if you were really having money issues. Yeah, yeah. Were you I, having money issues? No, I never had money issues. Okay. I never had money issues. I I was, I don't know how for some strange reason I've I've been able to 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 do well. But um, it was just for the glory, man. Mm -hmm. It was for the glory. I mean, my career, you know, I I was the kid who they It's like you know that commercial member a long time ago oh mikey will eat it you yeah, know mikey that cereal it, yeah. thing yeah mm -hmm. it's it like okay yeah oscar will fight him you know that's mm -hmm. just the way it was like I, I i want to take on everybody and so when i heard this pacquiao coming up um i was like all right i'll fight him mm -hmm. no problem but yeah money issues no i never had money issues i want i want to ask about floyd you and floyd have have uh, had a love-hate relationship sometimes yeah. you seem <laughs> like y'all in love sometimes seem like y'all hate each other <laughs> what, what do you think about some of the the recent things he's been doing these uh exhibition flights and do you think it tarnishes his <sighs> his record or him as a boxer i mean i don't think i don't think it'll tarnish his 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 fighting professional fighting you know career that he's had um but but you know in, in people's eyes Maybe some people that really don't know boxing, that are not, you know, experts or whatever, or they're casual fans. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they can have the impression that, oh, wait, that's Floyd, like, you know, doing these exhibitions, and and he doesn't look the same as he did 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not the invincible Floyd, so people will have that impression, you know, and so maybe that that'll kind of stick with them for a while. But his career inside the ring as a professional, he's. He's going to be one of the all-time greats. I, I love the part of the doc. I can't remember who you were fighting, but is when you were talking about, I think it was issues with your first wife and you were fighting. And that's when you said you run from all your problems, but they, they did it to where it's like, so not, it's, a, it's a correlation yeah. between what's happening in the ring and what's happening in your real huh. life. But but do you still run from all your problems? No, no. I, okay. I, 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 I face them head on, man. Mm -hmm. I face them head on. I've never been so free in my life. You know, and it took it took fifty years, man. It took mm. fifty years to um to just come out with the truth, you know, and and um and 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 tell the story my way, you know, mm -hmm. the the real way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's 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 never too late. I think you know, and I I can finally I I mean I have like two three years of sleeping great at night. Man. Mm. Wow, yeah, it's pretty. That's cool. the first time in your life ever. ever. Damn. I was going to ask, you know, with this documentary, it seemed like a lot of things you regret. You know, what's the biggest thing that you regret? Whether it's, you know, the way you treated your wife, the way you treated family members. What's the biggest thing that, that you regret? I think the only regret I have is, like, not being there for my kids. Yeah. Well, some of them, you, it was like yeah. three of them you didn't even know you had, or two, right? No, I mean, 
I, eventually, okay. you know, the, the the news came out, mm-hmm. and that's how I found out, right? Um, but not having a relationship like for a few years mm-hmm. when they were kids that that's that's the one part I I most regret, you know. I mean, I can I can take it back, but you know, now it's still a work in progress. I'm not I'm not like you know super father now. I'm. What's the relationship with them now? Do y'all speak? Y'all cool? Or? Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. I mean, you know, I I I don't I love them. I every time I see them, we we hug, we kid. When whenever we hang out, we're like we're like family, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but but there's still that little reserve, you know energy you know that it's like oh man you know you weren't there for me you know kids never forget man. Right. they never forget on, on the documentary bernard said that uh when y'all started golden boy you didn't want to become what you despise do, do right you, do you think golden boy <clears throat> did become what fighters despise because right now y'all are suing ryan garcia no we don't we didn't we didn't become uh we're, we're, we're sticking to our to our word i mean we didn't become the don kings of this world you know mm-hmm. we're we treat fighters fair you know what's happening now with fighters is that everybody wants to become a businessman. Mm. Everybody wants uh, all fighters want to think that they they're in charge of their career outside the ring. Like you, you have to focus inside the ring, but it's like and you need the necessary people, the smart people outside the ring. And a lot of these fighters they think instantly that promoters are at fault, mm-hmm. and it's not like that. I mean, not with us. I mean, we're you know Bernard Hopkins and myself, we. We're we're real, man. We we treat fighters with respect. We treat fighters, you know, we fairly. Um, you know, we're just, we work for the fighter. That's what we do. And so, but a lot of these fighters, they think that they always deserve more. But aren't those fighters earning? I mean, learning early, what y'all learned late, because you did. The I same hope thing. so. Man. Mayweather did the same yeah, thing. I hope so. Look, I mean, I who. What better person than me to 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 mentor these kids, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, whatever kid wants to like ask me questions, I'm I'm there I'm there to to guide them and to help them to give them some advice if they ask me because I can't go and like preach to them. Okay, you got to do this, 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 and that. Like, they're not gonna listen. But if they come to me and they ask me, then I'm more than happy to tell them. You know? That kind of contradicts what you just said, though, because you sound like you was a little upset that these kids want to have more control over their. Career. It's. I mean, it, the it's. Thing. It's the. It's not. Not. How should I say? It? It's not control. It's. A, they. They just don't know the business, so they ask for way more than what is like. What is. What is there? Mm-hmm. You know, in, in the pot. Mm-hmm. I, I encourage them to learn the business. We actually encourage. We tell them everything. We sit them down and the numbers and this and that. But you. You do need somebody who's smart. Somebody who who can focus on the business alone in your team and the fighter should should be the fighter mm-hmm. you know should that's your job you know and so fighters today they just want to like they don't know the business and so that's when it gets a little a little you know right. you, you you think y'all could still have a good relationship with someone like Orion Garcia being that y'all y'all are suing him right now yeah we are we are suing him uh you know to honor his contract that's mm-hmm. basically it's like and that's what I'm saying about these kids now it's mm-hmm. like they don't really understand contracts mm-hmm. and this and that and it's like we have a solid contract that you just have to honor that's it i sued you because just to let you know that you have to honor your contract mm-hmm. i didn't sue you for anything else i just sued you for just to honor your contract you're not trying to get no more extra money no or anything. Just, no, just, no no not yeah. at all just just can honor I, your deal can a fighter focus like that okay like if can ryan focus like I gotta go out here and fight for this guy. I don't even really want to fight. Yeah, no, I mean, look, literally, because I, I I like Ryan, man, mm-hmm. you know, and and I took him under my wing and everything, and you know, and then he grew to this, you know, to 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 a different level, you know, and right. he has his own people and this and that, and 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 it hurts, you know, it hurts because you mm-hmm. take you take you take a kid like Ryan and you want to mentor him and and you want to you know teach him the ropes, and then uh, and then this happens. Um, yeah, I th- I think I think you can, you know, for you know, forgive and forget, you know, I guess, mm-hmm. you know. What's um, the moment that you had to fix up, right? Cuz we've seen the drugs, you talk about the substance abuse, we've seen no. uh the charges brought against you. Yeah. When was the moment that you were like I have to change? Man, much, much I don't know the specific time and day, but yeah, a long time ago, years ago, but I couldn't. I I didn't know how I wasn't ready, you know, and that's. I think that's the word. I wasn't ready. I think. I think. 
I think my destiny was to be ready just literally a couple years ago, mm. you know? I just wasn't ready. I, I, I didn't know how to be ready. Right. It's like I was, I don't know if you call it a late bloomer or whatever you might call it, but it's, I just was not ready. Yeah. Charlamagne, you, you gotta um, go too. Oh, I got two more questions. Mm -hmm. Do you, you think you could have showed Ryan Garcia more grace after his loss to Tank? Because you, you kind of, you, you, you lost <clears throat> to Bernard Hopkins kind of the same way. Body shot. Yeah. You know, you feel like you could have showed him a little more grace after that loss? Uh, I, I, I really don't understand like that. Um, I, I, I've been there for him all, all along. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there for him the whole week of Vegas, this mm -hmm. and that. Um, if, if you would have, I don't know if you were there, but if you would have been there, um, at the fight, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was nuts. I mean, people, I've never seen anything like it. It was, I mean, I think the arena was overflowed by like 3000 people. It was mm -hmm. just nuts. Mm -hmm. People standing, standing room only. It was, I've never seen anything like it. And so after, after the fight, I'm walking down with my security guards and they, we're just like sardines, just trying to get out. And I hear this voice like, hey, um, you know, watch, watch your back. You know, it's gonna happen tonight. Damn. Right? And, I'm, and, and, and right away I just panicked like, oh shit, like I just got threatened. So I told Hopkins, you, you go take care of, you know, so he went to Ryan's locker room and then all my ex executives were at Ryan's locker room afterwards and they were even on stage with him after the fight. Mm -hmm. And, but the fact that I wasn't, you know, now I'm the bad guy, mm -hmm. you know, I was just trying to get out of there because when you get something like that in your ear, I had no clue who it was because I'm looking around at so many people. I just told my security guard, Hey, let's, let's, let's get out of here. So you would have left even if Ryan would have won. Um, if if I had if they told me that, yeah, yeah I would have. I would. I had to. And you had that conversation with Ryan. He understood that. I don't think he understood no. it. Yeah. What well, what is boxing missing? Because it feels like they're great fighters, but no stars and no yeah. top notch promotion. Like when Super I stars. Right. like they had top notch promotion yeah. for you and yeah. the Mayweather. Right. Like, what do you think is missing? I think it's. Uh, I think if HBO twenty four seven comes back, you know, would be would be a, a positive. Mm -hmm. for the sport but I, I really do think that there's 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 an overflow of too much talent you know mm. so there yeah it's crazy really there's a lot of talent mm. out there now but so we don't have enough spots on tv to showcase all this talent to have a consistency you know fighters are now fighting once a year mm. you have this crawford spence fight coming up i mean mega these, fight yeah it should these, be a mega yeah fight. no it's a mega it should be a mm. mega fight but mm -hmm. it's like the casual fan or like doesn't really know who they are right. us boxing fans know and it's going to be a big fight it's going to be a big event but it, it, it's not like a de la Hoya mayweather you know where you had 24 7 hbo and the casual fans knew outside of boxing who we were they do uh, have a show it's not 24 7 it's yeah they have it on uh, all access all i access, think yeah, on, yeah, on showtime yeah, showtime. yeah. showtime's yeah. been doing a great job mm -hmm. yeah by the way but but it's, there's too much, a, a lot of talent, a lot of fighters, and all these fighters are just fighting once or twice a year. So you can't get the exposure, you can't get the rhythm going, you know, uh, you know, in the ring, you, you, you fight once a year and it's like, now, now, and you take a break for 10 months. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you gotta be consistent in boxing. Yeah. Who, who you got, Spencer Crawford? I got, uh, I got Crawford, yeah. Really? Yeah, I got Crawford, yeah. I think he's a little more elusive I think so. I mean Spence is amazing. I promoted him for most of his career, but mm -hmm. he's he's. I thought he was going to be the next Sugar Ray Leonard, mm -hmm. um, but I got Crawford. He's more elusive. He throws more combinations. He has better footwork. But who knows? I mean, you never know in boxing. I got you know. Spence. You don't think Spence is too naturally just naturally big for him? He's strong. He's a mm -hmm. big kid. Yeah, he's a big kid. Um, but I just think that that Spence um, just is it's too robotic. Mm -hmm. He th he throws when he catches you, he'll catch you and he'll knock you out. I just think Crawford is a little more, you know, he can move around a little more and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, dodge the punches. But if he gets tired and Spence catches him, he's he's going to go out. Decision, knockout, what you think? I think knockout. You think, I you think, think knockout. Bud's going to knock Spence out? I think, no, no, no. If 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 Spence catches him, he'll knock oh, out gotcha, Crawford. Gotcha, gotcha, but gotcha. Crawford, I think decision. Yeah, I think decision. Did you really want to die in the ring? Yeah. Yeah, in that fight. When I was looking back, I've never seen the Pacquiao fight ever since I fought him. And when they showed me the documentary, when the final product was done, I was like, yeah, at that moment, I was hoping that Pacquiao would land the perfect punch. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And that's, that's the third time I think about like suicide, you know, like wanting to just 
make everything disappear you know what was the other other two times that made you feel that way um one time i was like 24 i had bought like this new ferrari and i was driving down the freeway um two in the morning uh drinking i was driving like 175 mm. and and i was hoping that i would just that something would happen mm. yeah what got you to this clarity was it therapy was it I think I think uh, I th yeah I mean it has everything to do with it all this therapy um, rehab mm -hmm. this that um, I think it was just time man it was just time I mean I've done a lot of fucking work for my life man mm -hmm. for me and uh, you know it just it just kind of like it fell into place that's it it's like I'm right there I'm I can see everything clear now you know it's crazy it's crazy we gotta go Shala we're well, we appreciate you for joining us. Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya. The Golden Thank Boy two-part documentary. When mm -hmm. does it come out? We got screen. Uh, July 24, 25. July 24, 25. Yeah. Right, two-part right. series, yeah, On 90 HBO. minutes each. Yeah. That's right. All right, let's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.